This is Swiss and Chips, your British guide to Switzerland. Hello, you're listening to Swiss and Chips. I'm Jo. And I'm Simon. And today we're talking about voting in Switzerland, because if you've been listening already to our podcast for a while, you may have heard that I became Swiss recently. Cling, <laughs> yeah, cling. That was a cowbell. Anyway, um, and it quickly became apparent that I would have to exercise my democratic Swiss rights by taking part in a vote. Yes, which you did. Which I did with great enthusiasm. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. But before we get to that, we need your help in settling a little argument that well, has come I about here. Well, I need your help. <laughs> no, I need your help. So when I told people that I had gone to vote for the first time, the first question they came back with pretty much 10 out of 10 times, not that I talked to so many people about it, but many, was, so how did you vote on blah, blah, blah issue? And I was quite surprised slash shocked slash ooh, cautious and slightly scared because where I come from, we don't normally discuss how you voted unless it's with a good friend and you know you're both already on the same side. Or um, you're looking for a fight. And I said, this is a total normal thing. I would ask the same because that's like an opening question. It's like talking about the weather. It's like, hey, how did you vote? And then you already have a ground to have a heated discussion or become best friends. Ooh, this is really funny because we have such completely opposing views about this. And that's why we wanted to know what you think. Yes, exactly. So we would like you to head over to our website. Which is called? Swissandchips.com. Yes, all in one word. All in one word. And there you can vote uh, and tell us, do you think you should tell people how you vote or not? Yes, and next time we will let you know what you decided and who won. Yes. So please go and vote for me. <laughs> team Joe, Team Joe, <laughs> Team Joe. <laughs> no, and another reason is that we have our Facebook group, which we mention very often. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called Switzerland for English speakers. And many people join. And uh, when you join, you have to answer a few questions. So we can see there's not a test, there's more that we can see that it's not um, spam. Yeah. So we ask these few questions and often people say, hey, we are listening to your podcast and it's really nice. And obviously we are extremely happy to see that each time, but then they're in the group and they're mixed with lots of others. And most of them are not listeners of our podcast. They just joined because the group is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I still think it's great to have it and it's very helpful, but our listeners get a bit lost and that's why we don't really know. You know, we want to hear from you and want to get to know you and want to know your opinion and uh, talk a little bit more with you. So, and that's the first start. Come to our website, vote, and we'll let you know what you think next time. We are excited to, uh, to hear what you think. And we're excited to win. Well, <laughs> I am. We can go, let's, let's, seeing as we already started about this, mm -hmm. I think this is really a normal thing to ask hmm. because, you know, if, if you're completely different opinion, you can have a heated discussion. I think every Swiss person is very used to this, to have very, you know, different opinions and discuss them and you can talk and that doesn't change your opinion about the person very much, I don't think. Hmm. But does it though? Because... You know, okay, let's take the last votes that we had. They were about pensions, they were about animal rights. And, um, you know, the pension vote came down to some pretty fundamental issues in the end. But animal rights, I think, is an easy one to, to discuss, whether you know the issue or not. And um, Depends with whom you discuss. I mean, if you're a farmer, then that can be also very... Well, that's what sensitive. I'm saying. People normally already have an opinion yeah, about how true. animals should be treated. You know, that's true. fundamentally, people mm. have an opinion on that, I think. And that's why... I think it's difficult to discuss these kind of issues with people that you don't know very well, because you don't know if that person is, you know, extremely into animal rights or doesn't really care about them. And then if you are someone who extremely cares about them, the person you're talking to doesn't really care, isn't it going to be difficult to maintain that friendship? Because suddenly you have, you know, completely opposing views about something that matters to you. Mm, but and that's so, why I don't think you should discuss so you, politics. So you would rather be a friend with someone you don't <laughs> know. I think you get to know people like that. It's very nice, you know. Yeah. You, you straight away have a good opinion where these people stand. And quite often this is a little bit like, if it's such a fundamental question, 
you already know where this person in general stands about the world views, I'd say. If it's a very left wing, very right wing, or, you know, you can, you, in your head, you can... Get a picture of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to, nice to discuss this. And it doesn't really... That's that's what I meant. I think Swiss people are very used to have friendships with very different opinionated people. And that's why they don't really... That doesn't really matter. To me, I'm also friends with people that are very different, have very different opinions mm, to like me. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Like you in this boat. <laughs> like me in this boat. Anyway, I hope this gives you a little bit an insight how, how Swiss people think. And that's why they always ask, because it's a good starting point to have a nice yeah. discussion, a nice, you know, chat. I just found it super interesting because as you said, you know, with British people, we often talk about the weather and this is not just something coincidental. I think it's a topic because mm. everybody can talk about it and it's very inoffensive. Yeah. And the thing is in the UK, we're not used to voting all the time. I think that's the difference as well. Maybe, You're voting yeah. four times a year, yeah, yeah. you know, minimum roughly. Whereas we're voting maybe every few years and yeah. then every now and then on a gigantic issue. Mm. And I think people weren't used to discussing these things very much. And with the past couple of votes, I don't know about anyone who's listening, but I got stung a few times by discussing these highly... Um, Brexit, for example. Brexit, for example, springs mm. to mind, you know. And people you thought you knew suddenly had very different opinions to you. And it mm. was, you know, it was kind of a shock. Yeah, and I think a lot of people went ah, through that. That's a good, a good keyword you mentioned there. Mm. Um, people you think you knew. And I think that's, that's the difference because we also voted about the... Uh, not the EU, but similar like the EVR. And um, it's, uh, you know, because you often discuss this, it's people, you know, people already. So you discuss this, but you already know what they're going to vote. Mm, so mm -hmm. you ask them and you discuss it very heated, but, you know, you already know it, basically. And sometimes, you know, you can exchange arguments and some people are maybe a little bit on the brink and um, then you can... yeah. Not no, on the brink. That's not the word. <laughs> no, they are on the, the <laughs> tip of the, you know, on the tipping point. They're just... no On the edge. They're, no, no, they're not <laughs> on the edge, but they might be after this podcast. <laughs> they're sort of, they're undecided. Yeah. That's what they are. Isn't there a better word? There is, um, there is but I can't think of it there right are, now. But they're uh, undecided. Ooh, <laughs> they're they're a bit wobbly in the middle. Wobbly. Wobbly? They're wobbly. Wobbly. <laughs> right, there we go. We have it. So now we talked a lot already. Mm. But let's swing back to you. Yes, please. Your first vote. Yes. How was it? Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> so we went to vote in person because I think that's part of the fun of voting, going to the place. Oh, what are the other ways you can vote? Well, it seems most people in Switzerland vote by post, yeah. which is so boring mm. and requires a lot of envelopes. Well, I mean, if you haven't seen the them before, is already there. a gigantic envelope comes in the post. You've got to rip it open inside. There's various bits of paper, which you have to turn around the right way. Then there's more envelopes inside and more envelopes inside. It's like a Russian doll envelope situation. Well, and you have to put them all in the right way and package it and stick it down and send it back. Yes and no. Nightmare. There is the envelope. Yeah. You have to open it very carefully because especially if you want to send it back, you will have to close it again. Exactly. So there is a, a way to open it. And then inside is an explanation, mm -hmm. sometimes advertisement if there if it's an election. Mm -hmm. Then you have the the um, paper where you sign that y it's your vote, yeah. and then you have the vote paper where you make the crosses to yes and yeah, no, or you paper. write yes and no, the ballot paper, and which goes back in is the paper you signed, mm -hmm. and that goes back in the envelope with the address you send it to. Mm -hmm. And then there is the ballot paper that goes inside an envelope. So the person who is counting... Like I said, very complicated. <laughs> no, the person that is counting <laughs> opens the envelope and there are only two things inside. Mm. So the signature and the vote yes. envelope. It's easy for them. <laughs> it's not easy for us, is it? Let's be honest. Right. Well, now it is. I explained it straightforward. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's only a 15 point process. <laughs> <laughs> Which Swiss people learn from birth. So yeah. get started if you only just... There okay. you go. So you can vote. And usually these uh, letters come like two weeks before or three. A bit earlier than that, I think. Three, yeah. four, Some three, weeks three before. Mm -hmm. A few weeks before. And then you've got time to throw it just in the next letterbox or... 
you go and vote in person a few days before or on the Sunday. Mm-hmm. And that's only what we did. Only till 11, isn't it? That's when yes. that's right? And that's what we did. And please continue. Yes. So I looked up the locations where I could go and vote in person because obviously I wanted to fully enjoy this first experience. And we went in the city of Bern to a very nice old building. Uh, there were some very friendly people there waiting for us, vote helpers. Yeah. And it was pretty nice, actually. Yeah, very jolly. I took my whole envelope of bits of paper mm. and, you know, showed it to the people. And they said, all right, go go over there, tick your boxes. We had to sign it. We didn't have our own pen, which was a mistake, but they had some. It was fine. Um, and then I had to show my paper, but not how I had voted. Very important yeah. to they, protect the privacy yeah. of the vote, like yeah. I said earlier. Uh, and then another chap gave in an official stamp. Ding, and then I posted that in another little box there mm. we were done yeah and, and there was no one else there and bob's your uncle bob's your uncle and fan is your aunt i'd voted what the other thing is how was it the results what do you mean did you know how was it exciting or not oh when the results came in yeah. um i mean it's always extremely exciting when mm. the votes come in from the swiss vote yes but um no, you know, i think it mattered more this time because i had actually taken part mm, and that's yeah. not to be cheesy but it did okay so that yeah. was great and i think for me it is always quite interesting you know it de- very much depends on the topic mm. and a is it a topic that really matters i mean all of them do somehow but some One are that bit, sort of directly affects yeah. you right and then you've got the other uh, b it is something that is on the brink <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the brink is you know about to whoa flip ah, okay. over and die oh okay so it's on the flipping side <laughs> What? It's, it's a vote know. that could go either way. Yes. Isn't there a better expression? I know you're looking for this nice word, but I can't think of it right okay. now. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. So if you are on the flipping, on the, if it could go either way, yeah. then you are also, you know, excited to know, is it a yes or no? Because mm-hmm. we have always um, before. Uh, there are sort of preliminary results, aren't there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that come um, earlier in the day before the final result. Yeah, I mean, like the week before or so, you've got already ah, yeah. they projections. Test, or Yeah, they test the water with a, sm- with a small sample of voters to see how the vote might turn out. Yes, and then you've already got an idea if it's quite clear what it's going to be, then it's also not so interesting to follow it. By the way, this is uh, one reason I think a democracy expert told me Yes. Uh, why Switzerland is quite stable and companies see it as quite stable because mm-hmm. of these these um, projections that happened before. So companies already know what to expect roughly and there are mm. not very rarely huge surprises like Brexit. Mm-hmm. You know, that's unlikely to happen in Switzerland mm. as such a surprise. It's likely to happen the result, but we would have probably known already before in which direction it could go mm. or that it could be very tight. I think that the thing with Brexit was that it was going to be pretty tight because people were so divided. Yeah, but you thought, but in Switzerland, we already know it's going to be tight. Ah, yes. Everything is already highly organized here. No, I I just, that's a a democracy expert. (laughs) Uh, Renat Künzi is his name. Yeah. So, uh, and he, he actually told me that this is probably one reason why why um, companies in Switzerland feel quite safe because there are no big surprises. Mm. Anyway, mm-hmm. last question about you. This was your first time and you already mentioned that we can go and vote four times a year at least. Sometimes it's also elections or something happening. In a bonus year. Yeah, whoop, in a whoop. bonus year. <laughs> um, how was it? When, when does... When was the first, after becoming Swiss, when is the first time you can vote? Because last time we talked about you becoming Swiss and there were several steps and there were several letters which said, you are a member of the city, now you're a member of the canton, now you're a member of the country and so on. And yeah. we didn't exactly know when the ballot paper come. Um, well, I got my ballot papers for the vote in September just because I became Swiss you know, just in time, basically. Mm, okay. It just worked out so by chance. So you have to wait for the final, final letter and then the next vote, it's going to be it. Yeah, I mean, I got the letter that said you'd been accepted and, you know, from that point, yeah. I was Swiss. Yeah. And obviously that was far enough in advance before the papers had been sent out, so my luck was in. All right. Yeah. I hope we uh, answered all the questions. In case you have any, go to our website, which is called swissandchips.com and you can comment there and we talk about this next time. Let us know. 
And now it's time for... <lacht> Learning Swiss German <lacht> with Schweiz und Pomfrit. <lacht> Schön nicht bei ähm, Sch Schweizer und Pomfret. Schweizer well. und Pomfretin. <lacht> exactly, yes. I hope people get what I'm saying. Yeah, so it's Swiss and Gypsy and Swiss German. Exactly. Anyway, Schweizer that's, und Pomfret. <lacht> yeah, this is not the Swiss word. The Swiss word is fitting to the season. Mm -hmm. Gfröhrli. Say that again. Gfröhrli. Okay. Written is capital G, F, R, O, umlaut. O umlaut L I. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that gefühli? Gefröhli. Gefröhli. Okay, uh, so this is the fun part of the podcast where I have to guess what Swiss German words mean. And I'm going to guess it means something like um, little frozen person. Mm, very close. Yeah. Very close. Gefröhli means someone who is always a bit chilly. Ah, one of those. Hey, that's yeah. a great word. You are such a gefröhli means you are always, you are such a... Yes. Mm, I know those people. They're people like, oh, it's so cold in here. Can't you shut that door? There's such a draft. Yeah, you or know like, them because you I live with one. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a good for early. <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. Early, yes. I don't know. Is there a word in no, English? But oh, no, but we so totally need one. Mm. How about uh, I think we just chivalry? Call, I think we just call them a whinger. Mm, not, a, <laughs> not a shiverer. No, no, no. A, a whingy moany person. How sad. Time to get a jumper. Mm, maybe we can find a word for this. Yeah. Winger is... I'm just joking. Okay. Yeah. Don't joke like that. I will use this word. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Don't, please. <laughs> All right. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to go and vote on our website. Yes, vote for me. Bye. Bye. Bye.